How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week four. Got a interesting game on the road against a 2-0 UCLA. But before we get into that, as always, we've got to go through our recruiting. And first, I want to take a look at ESPN here. The top 25 polls. What are the odds that the number two curse can continue this week? Oklahoma, the luckiest team this season. We know that last week... The previous number two, Alabama, lost by a touchdown to the new number nine, Texas A&M. Oklahoma, however, has a bye, so they'll be safe for at least one week here. And I'm sure that they are thanking their lucky stars on that one. Throughout the rest of the top 25, we do see a couple losses. Number five, LSU, falls embarrassingly to a still unranked Mizzou. And Wisconsin loses a close one to number 21, Arizona State. UCF loses to a now number four, Penn State, in a close game. You can't really fault them for that. That's a that's a that's now a, a quality loss. And then Tennessee, the Vols, fall to the now number five, Oregon Ducks. And dropping out of the polls are Iowa and Virginia Tech. A lot of teams getting those uh, those votes. And uh, one that we don't see receiving votes anymore would be, as I have been uh, corrected, Appalachian State. Let me know if I <laughs> if I got that right this time. I know I've been saying Appalachian State. Appalachian. Is that Appalachian? Uh, I don't know. That sounds maybe more correct, but it appears as though they're not getting any votes. I'm curious. We'll take a look. Uh, at the conference to see if maybe uh, they have had a loss and where we sit among the rest of the teams. Looking here at the conference standings, a uh, lot of parity so far, no ranked teams. And the Mountaineers, well, they're not receiving any votes because they haven't played any football. They're, they're acting like it's 2020 here and their season's been delayed. But 0-0, oh and, oh, and I imagine week three here, they have to finally get a game done. I'm sure their players are itching for it and, you know, most likely a big scheduling error because now they won't have those buys at important parts of the season. And I actually forgot, it's not even week three, it's week four and they haven't played a game yet. Uh, I forgot that we had our own buy as uh, we'll go into our recruiting here and just see what it's looking like. Down at the bottom of our board where we will spend a lot of time, I think, this season on our recruiting uh, we're going to just go through and get rid of a lot of players. Joe Parker, Georgia Tech's got him. Nothing that we can do there. We could, however, get Bobby Goolsby. Joel's fine. Tim's fine. Uh, some of this is positive. Dustin Hawkins, unfortunately, is going to basically be going to FAU. And besides that, it looks like we are honestly in a good position with the rest of the board. I'm not seeing anybody else that we are dropping um, more than we can catch up to. So we have a lot of points this week. We have a lot of players that we are in the lead with. I think that we're going to start offering some scholarships. So the way that we're going to offer our scholarships here early in the season is we're going to look for guys uh, based on overall. We're going to try to just find the best players possible. And uh, right away here, this, this first week that we're offering scholarships, we'll go ahead and do that to the players that we are either in the lead with or, you know, just, just behind. So our scholarships are now in. We gave six or so offers. Now we get to schedule some visits. Now, typically, I like to do visits against a, a ranked opponent, and I like to stack up my visits to get as many complimentary points as possible. And the other thing I like to do, if we're not really competing with another team, I like to get my visit in as early as possible uh, just so we get those points and we have a chance to get the player committed sooner rather than later. Frees up points across the board Generally, I feel like it's a good idea. So to start week seven, we're going to start scheduling some players for the Georgia Southern game. And in a situation like this, I mean, we're fighting Wake Forest, South Carolina and Duke. We will try to go here in the middle of stuff and send uh, our guys to the, the Texas State game. So now you can see uh, you know, we've scheduled two guys to this Georgia Southern game already. And we're already getting that extra 100 points on the visit or the, uh, the complimentary visits. So the more you add to that, the more guys that you're going to get. And again, you not only are we getting the extra points towards the recruits, but we're getting extra XP for the coach. So it looks like basically we're going to have two big games that we're going to try to set up uh, for our recruits. 
those being Georgia Southern and Texas State. Now we were planning on altering the sliders a little bit. I'll just show what we have right now. I know fatigue is kind of a controversial one. I typically play with it on. We're gonna keep it there. But on the AI, we're gonna go to the CPU. We're gonna up the wide receiver catching a tick. We're gonna up the interceptions and then we'll keep it here. Now, this obviously is not final. The more that we play, we're going to see how things feel. If every game we go in and something just feels too easy or maybe too hard or something's happening too often, we'll come through and make changes. And hopefully we can get ourselves a good slider set that feels good, not only at the beginning of the dynasty here when we're a pretty low overall team, but also when we're nearing the end of it and we become, you know, that championship caliber team. And it could be that maybe we don't have a single set of sliders and, and it stays fluid throughout this entire series. Before we get into this game, let's take a quick look at some season stats. We can see Kellen Mond actually leading the country in passing yards. Fred Payton down at 63rd rushing wise. Uh, CJ down at 63rd. Receiving leaders... Latouche goes down at 47. Tackle leaders, we kind of discount because of the way that solo and assisted tackles work in this game. Kind of similar with sack leaders, but Jackson there with two puts him at 44th. Hopefully we can find ourselves getting a few more interceptions. I know we did really well last game, but Gallagher with just the one. Still a top 100 DB there. And kicking wise, a 35 yarder for Biscardi. Not bad but I would be ecstatic if we could come anywhere close to these top guys. 56 yards. That would be clutch and potentially very useful for us. Looking at our matchup again, Herb Street is going to say UCLA wins this. Um, they definitely have the advantage, although their overall doesn't seem all that crazy. We're just barely scoring more points, but they're getting a lot more yards on offense, and our defenses are pretty similar. Not really sure what it shows for us, but UCLA beats Nevada by 20, as they should. Probably should beat them by more. And then goes in and beats Virginia Tech, who I believed was ranked last week. Um, so it was a good win. Virginia Tech still, you know, a top 30 team, probably. They win that one by a touchdown. And they're probably expecting to do to us what they did to Nevada. Win it by multiple scores. The question is, can we stop that? Can we make it a close game and, and can we capitalize on their mistakes? We're going to go ahead and wear the white and black aways while UCLA has not been updated in the mod pack yet. So we'll just give them their standard homes. Again, the Bruins look above average both on offense and defense. Uh, high 80s for their best players, but they have no injuries. Uh, McCall getting him back next week that's gonna be big let's see if uh we can get it done we are in the rose bowl and obviously tails never fails so we will win the toss we are going to start most games to uh, elect to kick off and this game is now underway i don't think this is going to be returnable so ucla starting from the 25 for UCLA, this feels like a, almost a must-win game. They're going to put it on the ground first down. Yeah, that's a that's a big game. I don't know why, but I'm having a bad feeling about this game. They put it on the ground again. Their blocking has been pretty solid. We give up four there. And this is a massive hurry-up that we're seeing from this Bruins team so far. Third play of the game. It's a draw, which means they're on the ground again. I'm missing tackles. They go 13 yards. And I think it's about time that we bring a, a big blitz here. Try to stop this running game. They do put it on the ground again, and the draw doesn't work, so finally getting a stop. Second down. They hand it off again. Broken tackle. A little bit of a gap, and he's still going. He gets the first down. You really hate to see that there. Moving with ease. Play action. Quarterback has to get rid of it. And we're finally able to get a stop as DTR just throws that one away. There you go. Play action again. DTR scrambling. Oh my gosh, I just missed with Gunter, and it's another first down. This has been rough so far. This one's going to be a handoff. The blitz is coming. Finally, a good tackle. 
Second and eight, another handoff. Oh, we had a chance to hit him in the backfield. We'll stop the cutback from getting too much. And we are bringing a big blitz here on third down. Pressure came, he got rid of it in time. Broken tackle, touchdown Bruins. UCLA, not the best team that we've played so far this season. However, uh, oh my gosh, they just made our defense look terrible and Denmark dropped such an easy first down catch. We're actually lucky that that one doesn't go for uh, an interception. And just like that, we're in the third and seven. It looks like they're bringing a safety on the pressure. They will. Let's roll Peyton outside the pocket. Let's scramble for this. They left a lot of room sliding down across the 35. It's a good first down. Quarterback mobility is massive in this game. We're going to use it wherever we can and using it again on the read. Oh, I wanted to slide down, but Fred took a shot. Looking for a lot. Second and inches here on the play action right over the middle. We had Brown, but oh, just not high enough up the interception. And the Bruins have the ball back at midfield. That is a classic NCAA interception from the, uh, the linebacker just leaping for it. But after a decent first down stop from us, maybe uh, we can force a punt from these guys. Third and five. This is awfully risky, but we're bringing a big blitz here on third and five. Man, open! They're saying he was in bounds. Oh, I might want to challenge that. They're going in the hurry up. I feel like I need to. Oh, we're calling the we're calling the challenge here. Knowing this game, I assume that he's in, but they are in the hurry up. So the, the refs wouldn't get a chance to look at it. How close is this going to be? Ball caught. Oh, I think in real life you ha you absolutely could overturn that. How about in the game? No, um, of course. So we lose our challenge in a timeout, but hey, at least we've slowed down UCLA for a little bit. Gunter is there. Massive stop in the backfield. Second and 12, they go to the air. DTR is going to scramble and he thankfully slides down. I think he could have had a whole lot more than that. But now we get to see another third down. This time third and eight, expecting them to go to the air. It's apparently a screen. I wasn't paying attention. And we sacked DTR for 10 yards there. Fourth and 18. I was too worried about uh, blowing my assignment on that one. And so uh, I'm actually going to let that go in. I almost just screwed that play up. Thank goodness for the defense getting the stop as... Oh my gosh. I <laughs> oh, what am I doing? For some reason, I just didn't think that the DB there was going to stick with him. And so I've thrown a pick and I've given UCLA a touchdown. That is potentially a 14 point swing in this game and absolutely devastating. Diggs though, on the return. Out past midfield in a foot race, crossing the 30. Oh, maybe we can get those points back real quick here. I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to avoid passing as much as possible for the rest of this game as we hand this one off. CJ's got a decent carry. A lot of blue jerseys, <laughs> but he still picks up four yards. I feel like I really struggled to say jerseys there. Second and six up the middle. Oh, tackle just comes too soon, and it's a third down for us here at the end of the first quarter. And at the end of one, it's disappointing. Uh, it shouldn't be 14 nothing. Defense has showed signs. Offense has been non-existent. This is risky, but we're going for the slip screen. On third down, CJ has some space, has the first down. After Diggs' incredible return, we definitely have to score a touchdown on this drive. And uh, we'll hand it off for four yards there. Getting closer. Second and six, we go to the air. Tough one, CJ finds it. First and goal inside the five. From the four yard line. The weak counter. Blocking, not quite there. I think we lose a yard on that play. Looking for the uh, quarterback keeper on this one. The read option, second and goal. Fred Payton fighting for it into the end zone. That's one where I do not mind letting my quarterback take a shot. Absolutely necessary. We score our first per points in the game and it's a one score game for us now. First down for the Bruins on this new drive after the touchback and again, DTR just throws it away. Those plays seem so weird to me as I'm kind of watching for the screen. No, they hand it off. Oh, I was there. What am I doing? We still get the stop in the third down, but that could have been a whole lot less. Big third down here. They're going to go to the air. 
the screen almost one broken tackle a second and they get the first down are you kidding me guys we cannot afford to be getting beat on these tackles here comes another one maybe oh we get him at the line of scrimmage man this should have been fourth down they will go to the air here and they go to the running back we're not going to give that up thankfully third and long we can get a stop and with three and a half minutes to go if we do get the ball back there would be plenty of time to score fourth and three i don't think they'll go for this that one goes out of bounds at the 24 so honestly almost a shank and it's going to give us three minutes to drive down the field here a man open it's likely and that's 14 yards if you're UCLA, you should be a little bit worried about how this game is going so far. As uh, we'll go with the counter here on this first down. There's a little bit of blocking. CJ breaks a tackle across midfield. 17 yards just like that. And we're going to go with a little hurry up. They're kind of pressed up on these. Coverage. We have a man open. It's highly. He's in the end zone. Javon. I think I said that right. I know what you guys mentioned it. I think that we just... Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. Absolutely destroyed his man who was pressed up way too far on him. And Fred's able to make a beautiful throw, find him at the front of the end zone. And Javon, just like that, we are tied up. Uh, UCLA going to the air. They're looking for a deep one. How does he catch that? Oh no. We left the Bruins a lot of time to work with here. Two and a half minutes still. And on the first play, they cross midfield. They hand it off on this one. Kelly there with a nice stop. The clock is moving, but they have all three timeouts. We got absolutely mossed on uh, on that last one as, oh my gosh, broken tackles. Their runners are too strong for us. Inside two minutes, they're going to go to the air. DTR kind of had a man, felt the pressure, just missed him. They go to the air again. Oh, I was waiting for it. I thought maybe I would be able to jump that, but still third and five. And on this third down, they're going out route. Oh my gosh, they keep getting those. Critically, we only have two timeouts. As this goes below a minute and a half to play. Second and six. It's a touchdown? No, first and goal. Almost the touchdown. We maybe should have let him go in. I'm going to make them work for this as much as we can as we go engage eight. Stop of three there. Hawk keeps moving though. Or no, they've been taking timeouts. Now we're at the five. It's another handoff. Can we get their first stop? <laughs> Come on, can we just tackle him in the on the first try, please? There is a very real chance that we could be in the lead if that could happen. If we could just tackle guys, but here we are. Diggs though, another decent return out past the 25. So we've been left 51 seconds. And two timeouts to uh, try to down march down the field. <laughs> Safety read that one way too easily. We're lucky that it wasn't an interception. And this is a tough throw. Latushko, first down. See if we can maybe get out of bounds on this play. The pressure's there. Let's just go safe throw. Fine, likely. Get those three yards. Get out of bounds. That stops the clock. Allows us to take uh, a breather. Find Javon there for 12 yards and find ourselves potentially here in a pos uh, scoring position. Wide open, likely holds on to it, stays on his feet inside the five. We'll take the timeout. It's a first and goal. Isaiah likely with the big boy play is going to set us up here. You know, I was thinking fullback dive. I don't like it right now. I do not like it. We're going to audible. We'll see if we can find somebody on this one. I think it's a play action. Going to the air, rolling out of the pocket. We have Johnson, touchdown, Coastal Carolina. We've tied this game up. 21 seconds left in the half. And on top of all of this, we get the ball to start the third quarter. DTR scrambling. It's going to hit the ground. I assume we'll see the clock run out. Actually, UCLA in the hurry up to get another playoff. They run the same thing. DTR scrambling is literally the exact same play. Uh, one second on the clock. And it looks like they're going to try to get it off here. So uh, I'm going to... No. Okay. Thank goodness. Clock <laughs> strikes triple zeros on the half. We're going to go into the locker rooms tied up. You know, I haven't noticed anything crazy 
uh, that we should be looking for. You know, I've always got these sliders on my mind, but I can't help but think, is this still too easy? Do we need to start increasing things for the AI even more? Regardless, we're going to go into the second uh, half here. If you guys have ideas on the uh, sliders on what we could do, let me know. I'm very much interested in continuing to make changes to that, especially if it makes it uh, maybe a little bit more difficult. CJ would carry there. I will say, though, that I do probably have, you know, multiple hundreds of hours on this game as we find Javon. I, that wasn't even the route he was supposed to run, but we find him. When I hit the pass button, I thought I threw a pick, but I guess uh, me and him were on the same wavelength and he just went for... Uh, the go out but this 2-0 pack 12 team is not having an easy time with us that time only getting a yard on the handoff we're going play action second and nine tough throw javon can't hold on to it through the contact thought we had him inside the red zone instead we have a third and nine to contend with you know it seems like they're bringing pressure we're going to keep cj as an extra blocker blitz is coming Trying to throw one, Latushko, first down. <laughs> wow, I thought that was gonna be a pick too, but Greg had just enough separation. And we get the first down and we're moving, looking like we could take the lead in this game. Continue to run the ball as much as possible. As CJ will get hit behind the line of scrimmage, third and 10 here. I don't wanna settle for a field goal is the problem. We'll see how well they cover this, but we're looking for Javon. He's going to be open in the corner of the end zone. No touchdown, but it's a first and goal at the one yard line. Beautiful route. Just uh, found himself an island out there. I got to imagine there's zero chance we don't score on this play. First and goal. There it is. Touchdown for CJ. Lead for Coastal Carolina. And UCLA is now on upset alert. They're going to open this drive up. It looks like with a handoff, a lot of space there. Just falling over, guys. Eight yards. Felton is doing a great job today. We're going to take a massive risk here. Second and two. I'm going to engage eight. I do not want them to pick up the first down on this play. They do hand it off. Oh, my gosh. Felton breaks another tackle. Absolutely trucking us. You would think eventually the man would start getting tired from all the work that he's doing, but it doesn't seem that way as the shoestring tackles miss and he's got 24 more yards. I'm not so sure we deserve to uh, win this game as Dorian Thompson Robertson scrambles there. We get him for a gain of one and they were going to go to the air, open over the middle, third down. Could we hold him to a field goal here? We're coming with the corner blitz. Is it going to be enough? It doesn't matter. Line gets there. Zero yard carry, fourth and two. And that's a false start. You hate to see it. You know, I almost am tempted to take the time out because I think this one could be returnable. Instead, we're going to see if we can maybe block it. Oh, I had the jump. The kick is short. It is no good. We wouldn't have been able to return it. So it's fine that we didn't uh, go into the pump formation, but man, he had the accuracy, but not the distance. And how big does that false start end up being? Uh, five yard penalty, five yards would have made that an easy field goal. This quarter is burning to a close awfully quickly. Uh, scrambling, getting rid of that one. Oh, I thought we were going to find likely there. And now we've got a third and nine to try to pick up. Denmark just dropped it. Oh, uh, he, he just can't hold on to it today. Second dropped punt from Denmark on the day as we're able to get this punt to skip out past the uh, return man out of the 20. I think that one was pretty solid. But how big is not scoring on that life last drive going to end up being? I mean, if they tie it up, it's going to hurt as opposed to if we still had the lead. First down, it's a play action. They're looking deep. They have a man and he's still on his feet. Bush chasing him down, tackling him, but not before he gets inside the red zone. What a quick little lob. Finds the open man almost immediately, but I mean, it's not before uh, they pick up a ton. That time we do a decent job stopping the run. 
And on it, second down, another decent run stop. So is Felton getting tired or are we just starting to figure things out? Third and 11, they're going slip screen. I was kind of late to see it. Gunter can't mess this one up. He can't, he <laughs> has his tackle broken. Martel Irby absolutely did not want to go down there. Looks like UCLA is going to kick the field goal, but we're going into the fourth quarter first. So, I mean, we're going to have a one score lead, but it's not going to be a full touchdown. We need to score points on our next drive. And with the clutch skill activated now for UCLA, they've decided fourth quarters here instead of, uh, you know, maybe being pansies about it. Oh, and dead kick of the field goal. They're going to go to the air. I thought I had a pick. Instead, it's a first and goal for UCLA. And we're going to bring massive pressure on this first down. Try to stop Felton from carrying it into the end zone. And he has no problem, even with the pressure. I am now pretty worried. This is a returnable ball, though, for Diggs if we get some blocking. That doesn't look like it's the best blocking, but we make some moves. And we are near midfield. I probably shouldn't have gone for the step back. I think we could have been across the 45. And with 5.43 to play, the way I'm looking at this drive is I want it to be the final drive of the game. It's going to look real foolish if we go three and out here, but the way I see it, we might as well try to uh, end it while the game is tied. Ooh, I don't like that this is a third and seven, though. Big third down. We have Latushko. He's, oh, <laughs> he's going to get the yardage after catch. I was going to say he's short of the line to gain, but they didn't manage to get to him. They will bring pressure, so we're going to actually run away from that if we can. And we're just going to get clobbered at the line of scrimmage. Still going to keep running it as much as possible in this one. The counter sees some space, sees us across the 45. And we'll keep the clock moving. Going to close in here on four minutes. Incredibly important third down on this one. Uh, I'm just having to throw it up. Yeah, I just didn't. I couldn't scramble. They were containing the outside. And I didn't feel comfortable making a lot of throws. What I do feel comfortable, though, is going for this. On fourth down, we're too far up the field to punt. We're too far away to go for it. We're going to roll outside the pocket here. They've left it open. Peyton has all the space in the world. Across the 20, sliding down for the first down. We are now in field goal range. And we are going to look to start burning some clock here. On the draw, first down. <laughs> kind of ran into our blocker. Still got positive yards, though. Puts us over 100 on the day as a team. Could be in a lot of danger if we don't score the touchdown or get the first down here. So we need another first down. Man in motion. Some blocks for uh, Reese White, but it's just not enough. Might have to take a timeout here. Third and six going to the air. Latushko. What's he doing? <laughs> he, wasn't, he was just standing there. I needed him to run. I, I decided I was going to go to him, and then he just... He didn't do anything to help us out. So what we're going to do here is go for this. Fourth and six inside the 15. Lutushko holds on to that one. It's a first goal at the one. Oh my gosh, what a risk. I'm not certain that we're going to uh, make this the final drive of the game, but it should be pretty close. CJ in for the touchdown, 35 to 28 Coastal Carolina leads here late in the game in no way is this game over yet a minute and a half and all of their timeouts UCLA has a lot to work with we need these plays though tackling them inbounds in front of the first down marker anything that allows us to uh, keep the clock moving DTR risky scramble there but picks up 11 yards so it was worth it and they haven't had to burn one of those timeouts yet, but they are down to a minute left in the game. Quarterback scrambling again. And there's the first timeout with 56 seconds left. We've gone into the nickel here. Second and four for the Bruins. We're going to basically be playing as a spy as they hand this one off. And that's a foolish mistake. They don't get the first down and they're forced to take their second timeout incredibly questionable decision making i wouldn't be surprised if they go to the ground again here no it's gonna be a screen can we get there not quite oh that was way too close they find the first down on the screen and we're certainly not out of it yet trying to have decent coverage quarterback has a man open i don't know what he's doing um but only picks up five yards and the, the clock's still moving i think he had his tight end on a seam as they spike the ball here 
and it was very likely a touchdown, if not in uh, a first down, fourth and four, clock's moving. Even if they pick up this first down, they're going to have almost no time left. Ten seconds left in the game. Quarterback scrambling. That's it. It's all over for UCLA. I don't know what they're doing leaving a timeout. And on the road, in the Rose Bowl, your Chanticleers are going to win. UCLA takes a timeout to delay the inevitable, but Fred Payton gets to take his second D of the game. And that's going to be all she wrote. What a fantastic game. Offense started slow, but at the end of it, uh, I don't know. Defense did just enough, and the offense made some massive plays down the stretch. And what a clutch final drive to stay in that. Fred Payton, player of the game. 14 to 23 is, you know, not the greatest, especially with the interceptions. But hey, we went on the road to UCLA, and we're coming out with the win. Looking around the country... <laughs> <laughs> the one game that's standing out to me, number two did not play this week. Number three, Florida still did, and they take the loss. Our game, however, after a bad first quarter, we clutch up uh, in the second. We tie it going into halftime, and then that third quarter was just enough to put it over the edge. They outrushed us. We outpassed them. Uh, unfortunately, we we lose the turnover battle. And at the end of the day, I didn't think that we were going to win. Demetric Felton, 25 carries, 116 yards. Dude, it just seemed completely unstoppable in this game. After the game, we level up, so we're going to put that into our recruiting. But we'll advance the week towards our game at Georgia State and see uh, how they're doing and, and maybe what Herb Street thinks of the matchup. Four recruits are ready to visit. Again, we get a lot of XP enough to level us up. Uh, and wow, Georgia State 2-0 against us, 2-1. Conference matchup. Herb Street's going to go for us. We have the advantage in a lot of categories, especially the ones that seem to matter a lot. The overalls, I think that we're going to stand a good chance. The question is, <laughs> how, how does number two going to fare? Oklahoma had the bye. They play number four Notre Dame this week. There's a chance that another number two falls. This season truly could be the reincarnation of uh, 2007 at this point. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I got I to gotta take a second to say thank you to each and every one of you that has been watching these videos. Uh, like, ridiculous amount of support. It means the world to me. Really has me motivated to keep these uh, coming up as frequently as possible. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Like, we've gained a ridiculous amount of subs and, and views in the past few days. And hopefully, that means that you guys enjoy what you're watching. But anyways, it means a ton to me, so thanks again. And if you want some more content, you know, we are live all the time playing NCA 14 and all sorts of other sports games as well as a few other varieties over at twitch.tv slash goonmaster so hopefully we can see you over there as well anyways that's going to do it for this episode thanks again for watching my name is goonmaster you guys are the teal boys and wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning we'll see you later adios